Hello everybody, I am back with a new video, obviously. Today I am making a video about 10 things people say about regional airlines but they're not true. Again, this is my personal opinion, my experience. I've heard all of these things and I really don't think they're true. You may disagree with me, you're obviously welcome to. And before I start talking about the 10 things, I just want to say thank you so much for all of your comments, messages, and kind words here or on social media. I'm always trying to answer as fast as possible, but if I don't answer, um, please bear with me. I'm sure I will get to the comments uh, as soon as I can. <laughs> but if you have questions about training, uh, recruitment process with SkyWest, Make sure you watch my previous videos. Maybe I already answered your question. So let's get started with 10, thing, 10 things people say about regional airlines, but they're not true. Number one, regionals don't have layovers. Regionals absolutely do have layovers. With SkyWest, we have layovers um, when we did two, three, and a four day, and also a stand up, which is um, you do the last flight of the day and then the first flight of the day. So you have a um, very short night in a hotel, but it is basically still a layover. Um, I don't know why people think that regionals don't have layovers. To my knowledge, Allegiant, which is not even a regional, is the only airline in the U.S. that doesn't have any layovers. But yeah, with, with regionals, you will definitely have layovers. Number two, the service on regional airlines is so much different than on legacy airlines. That's absolutely not true. All the legacy airlines and for SkyWest Alaska as well, they care so much about seamless service. They don't want their passengers to think that they are on a different airline. You know, if they travel like Paris to Salt Lake City on Delta and then um, Salt Lake to Boise, on SkyWest Delta, they want the passenger to think that they're still on like normal Delta. Um, when I was a flight attendant, the announcements were absolutely the same. We never said, we never mentioned SkyWest. It was always Delta or Delta Connection. And we obviously served the same snacks. The blankets are the same. I already mentioned announcements. Yeah, so um, yes, the uniforms might be a little bit different than we also wear different wings. We wear SkyWest wings, but anything else is done in the way the mainline partner does it. So yeah, I don't think my I don't know why people think it's so much different because it's not. And I've traveled the regional airlines before I joined SkyWest, before I knew like the regional airlines existed, and I've never noticed that I'm on a different airline. Number three, flight benefits with regional airlines are really bad and they're low priority. <laughs> really bad. No, they're not. Yes, they are low priority, but let me explain. So with SkyWest, and I know that SkyWest is a little bit different, they were able to negotiate some special deals with mainline partners when it comes to like priority. So for example, if you work for SkyWest and if you fly Del Delta mainline, then yes, you travel lower priority than all Delta employees. But I think that's fair. It's not your plane, you don't work for the company. But when you fly on, on Delta SkyWest, then you will bump everybody. It is SkyWest plane, you work for SkyWest, and you will be like the number one person to get on. Now, obviously, then it's all determined based on your date of hire. Um, so if there's someone who was hired 1990 and you were hired 2017, they will still go before you. But um, you still travel on high priority. On United, it's a little bit different. We, or SkyWest travels um, on low priority on mainline planes. On your own planes, you travel on high priority, but United mainline employees can bump you on their vacation passes if they use it. But there is a little trick to it. If you work for SkyWest and you don't know the trick, 
if you know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but when I say the trick, then people usually know what it, what it means. But if you're for Sky West and you don't know the trick, ask me. I will explain it to you. And... Yeah, so I don't know how it works for Alaska for American because I never had those benefits. I know there are low priority, but with American, it was always so easy to get on, even if I had only jump CD benefits. But now let me tell you how people always argue that it's like so much better to have high priority benefits, so much better than having multiple benefits. So I was stuck in Hawaii and I flew to Hawaii, I was dumb. I flew to Hawaii when it was like a Hawaii season and the planes were full. So I was stuck in Hawaii and I was planning on taking American. That was the only time when it was super hard to get on American. There was a pilot who works for American. He was there with his family. So he obviously had like a very high priority on the plane. But he didn't get on because the plane was full. Nobody got on. So then all the non-refs, non-revenue passengers, the standby people like me, they were trying to get on different airlines. But um, because I worked for a regional airline and I had like real benefits, not jump seating benefits with Delta and United, I was able to bump these people who had high priority benefits on American or, you know, Southwest or whatever because I had real benefits and they didn't. For them, it was just jump seating or Z fare. But even though it was low priority, I was still able to get on. I think that day I got on Delta and the pilot with his family was stuck there because they had benefits. They had like real benefits only on one airline. So yes, I agree that like, sure, it's nice to have low, pri sorry, high priority benefits, but that works only if the plane has seats left if there are no seats left like your high priority benefits are really useless so that's just what I think and I never had any major problems honestly getting on there was only one time when I was like no I'm screwed and I had to fly to Colorado Springs and then take a shuttle to Denver because I couldn't get to Denver for like 18 hours but that was the only time. Um, regional airlines only fly to small airports. That's not true, at least not for SkyWest. I have a friend who works for Trans States, and they yes, they do fly to like pretty small airports, but they're also a very small airline. They don't have the many routes. But with SkyWest, I would say the majority of my flights were to big cities such as San Diego. Denver, Houston, Chicago, New Orleans. It was really nice. Sure, still in the US or we also flew to Mexico, Canada. Um, and Sky was also fly to the Bahamas, but I don't think that they have flyovers. But correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, it was still big cities and people a lot of the times think that regionals fly only to these small airports, but in all reality, they sometimes service routes to big airports because the airline doesn't want to use the big planes because it's not cost efficient. So for example, if Delta wants people, sorry, if uh, Delta wants to do fl uh, five flights a day from, I don't know, Salt Lake to San Francisco, but they know that um, the plane is the planes are not always going to be full. That's why they contract regional airlines and the regional does maybe one or two flights a day. Um, so the main line's not using money. So this is um, another use for, for regional airlines and that's why um, regional airlines still have um, layovers in big cities. I have hard times talking today. <laughs> Okay, um, number five, and this is like, are you freaking kidding me? Regional planes are less safe. I've heard this from a mainline flight attendant, and I was like, have you ever been on a private jet? And she said, no. I said, well, 
private jets are about the same size as regional jets. So, because she said that because they're smaller, the planes are smaller, they're less safe. No, they're not. The FAA obviously still has the same rules for smaller planes for regional planes like they do for the bigger planes. The first officer still does the walk around around the plane. There's maintenance. They do everything that they're supposed to do. I've never felt unsafe on a regional plane. It's true that like some of the planes are pretty old, but they're still well taken care of. It's the same like with your car. You have a car that's 10 years old, but if you take great care of it, then you can still use it and feel safe. It's the same thing. So when I heard this from, from a mainline flight attendant, I was really shocked that she said that because people travel in small planes all the time. So crazy, crazy. Number six, it is so much easier to get hired by a regional airline than by mainline. So here's the thing. Um, legacy carriers such as Delta, they have about 150,000 flight attendant applicants. What they also don't say is that a lot of these people are eliminated very quickly. And that's because they might not have legal rights to work in the US, they're below 21, they are not willing to relocate and all of these basic things. I'm sure they have a large number of people who are gone within seconds because they don't fulfill these basic requirements. Then a lot of people have like really, really bad applications or really bad resumes. They just don't really care. They just try it. They submit whatever they have and they're also eliminated very fast. So the, in all reality, the number of people that really get to the next stage, was, which is the video interview, it's not really, well, I don't want to say it's like, well, whatever, it's like 100 people. No, it's obviously not. It's still thousands but it is significantly lower than 150,000. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so the competition is definitely still big at mainline partner, uh, at mainline uh, carriers, but you know what, like I know people who applied for mainline and they, um, they apply for mainline and for regional, they didn't get, get hired by the regional, but they got hired by the mainline. And you're like, what the heck? Like, it should be easier. But I personally think that more than anything, it's about you fitting the culture of the company and how well you fit the job. I know I would be a terrible flight attendant at Southwest because I just don't fit the culture for multiple reasons. I think they're a wonderful company. They treat their employees well. They're a great employer, but they're not a great employer for me, for me personally. Not because I hate Southwest, I actually love Southwest, but as a flight attendant, I wouldn't want to like sing and I'm just not like that type of a flight attendant, if you know what I mean. Again, nothing disrespectful towards Southwest, love them. But, you know, you might apply to SkyWest and you might be this like joyful, playful flight attendant that like wants to do these, you know, crazy announcements and, and sing whilst skipping, um, you know, around the passengers. So you might fit the Southwest company, uh, Southwest, sorry, um, culture way better than SkyWest. For that reason, SkyWest might not hire you. So um, I think, you know, because it is, it is an entry level position, people will have this, will have similar experience. They don't care about education, like your you know, that's not what they check or what they're looking for. They are looking for like um, university diplomas and so on. So it is, it is based on your personality and on how you present yourself. Maybe you just had a bad day when you applied, applied to a regional. Maybe you didn't impress the recruiter and they are the people who decide who's going to get hired and who's not going to get hired. But maybe you had like a really good day. Um, when you applied to mainline and you you just nailed it so it is really you know what it is it it's kind of a mystery but I think I don't want to say it's equally hard because you know if you have 10 people who apply for for 
regional and 100 people who apply for mainline, you're competing with more people. But I ultimately think that what's meant to be, it's meant to be. So I hopefully this was like a satisfactory answer. Number seven, the training at a regional is so much easier. Hmm. I disagree. Training with SkyWest was hard. I've never been through a training for Mainline, and I'm sure it's hard too. I definitely think it's hard. Every airline will be hard. Um, unless you were a flight attendant before, this is going to be so brand new and you will be experiencing like emotions like never before, like I did. Like I am not like much of a crier, but I was really like just sad and, and crying a lot when I was in training, to be honest. But with SkyWest, it was so intense every day from morning till evening, just training and training and training. And we didn't really have much time off. I know that like with larger airlines, you get like the weekend off or you get a couple of days off a week. We had only two days within the 31 days. So we had 29 days of training. And when you train for Delta, I think it's about six or seven weeks, but you get days off, you get more days off. So when you really like put it together, there's not much like difference when it comes to time spent at training. And to be honest, the service part, learning how to serve like on American or Delta United, we didn't really spend much time on it. We spent a lot of time on the safety procedures, but still with service, we had to learn all the differences. And that's something that they obviously don't have to do at legacies or, or main lines. So, um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's easier. It's definitely not like, here's your manual, go home and read it and then come back and then you are a flight attendant. No, I will guarantee you that the training at any airline is tough. Okay, this one is a funny one. I've heard it a couple of times. Flight attendants and pilots from regional airlines sleep together on overnights. So, you know, obviously people do it. I will not say that. Well, <laughs> how do I say it? Let's just say that I was on an overnight and I knew that the flight attendant was sleeping with the pilot. But I don't think that it's like, it doesn't happen on every overnight, obviously. And it doesn't happen as much as people think it happens. Some people are normal, like they're dating. It happens, right? Like you work with someone a lot, like you click, you go, you spend four days, you realize so like the person, you're a couple. I, I met um, people who work for SkyWest who are married, who are dating, who are engaged. But yeah, sure, there are some hookups. But I don't think it's like it happens that often as people think. I think um, people say this because flight attendants and pilots from regional airlines, they stay in the same hotel. But... Don't think that you are forced to sleep with any, with anyone you're not and the pilots or the flight attendants are not expecting like, oh my gosh, this is so awkward, but they don't expect that like you're going to sleep with them. <laughs> and if they do, whatever. No, just kidding. Um, it, you know, they're still obviously professionals and... Um, but yeah, it still happens, but I don't think that applies to regionals. It only happens everywhere with any job. And I honestly, I like staying with pilots in the same hotel with regional airlines. Well, with regional airlines, just the one, just with SkyWest. But I liked it because, first of all, if you work only on the 200, you are, or if you work on the 200, you are the only flight attendant. And then, you know, it gets kind of lonely. You want to hang out with someone so you can hang out with the pilots. And I also felt safer when I knew that if something happens, they're close. So, 
for that reason, I enjoyed it. Number nine, mainline is always better. So this could be another video, but I, I think that regionals have advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage is definitely to pay for some people. It might be that they don't fly internationally. I don't know, but I don't, I don't think that mainline is always better. Some people just fit the culture of regional airlines so much better or they care about different things. With regionals, you get much more flexibility. Your seniority grows faster. With SkyWest, there are so many bases to choose from. They're opening Atlanta right now, so that's another great thing because there's going to be finally like a real East Coast base. Um, another advantage to regional could be that it's um, way, way like closer culture. You will work with people that um, you worked with before. That's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Just saying. <laughs> no. Um, and, and different things. Like, yeah, I would say like the, the flexibility is so much better. And then if you are joining the industry just for the flight benefits, like the flight benefits at the regionals are great. Yes, I already explained lower priority, but you have multiple choices. So don't think that mainline is always better. Like if people tell you like, oh, just aim for mainline, like don't even care about regionals. You have to realize for yourself and you have to do your own research if regional is, is a good fit for you, if that's something that you want to do or not. But don't listen to people when they say mainline is always better. And number 10. And this is very controversial, and I think that many people will disagree on it with me. But this is what I think, and I'm looking at, at it from HR perspective. Regionals are a stepping stone for mainline, for flight attendants. No, they're not. A lot of people will tell you, go to regionals, you know, enjoy it, um... You know, just to learn something about the industry, then applying for a mainline. And they see it as a stepping stone, but it's not. The definition of a stepping stone is that you have to do this before you do the next thing. For pilots, that's a different story. They have to do regional if they want to get hired by a mainline. But for flight attendants, no. You're not required to go to regional first and then apply to mainline. Yes, some people will say, well, I was with, with SkyWest and then I went on to Delta. So they hired me because I was a flight attendant before. That's not true. Only because it worked for them doesn't mean that that's the reality. Sure, I understand that some people might say, well, I felt so much better when I was like answering the questions during my interview because I knew, I knew the answers because I was a flight attendant before. All the questions are done in the way so a person outside of the industry without any knowledge can answer them. They are what we would call a common sense questions. They don't want to know any FAA rules and, and regulations and so on. They just want to know um, how you think, how fast you think, if you, you know, like, if you understand, like, if you have, like, a common understanding of the job. That's all. But you don't need to have um, experience from a regional airline before. Again, I know people who were for regional then got hired with a legacy airline. I also know people who never worked for regional and then got hired with legacy. And I also know people who works for um, for regional right now and they've been trying to get into mainline for like the last five years. So no experience is needed. And in a sense, it can also hurt you. Because, now from HR perspective, it is so much harder to retrain someone than to train someone. Some people are so set in their ways. I flew with people who would like, you, you wouldn't be able to retrain them. Or I, right now I work with people, you wouldn't be able to retrain them to do anything else. So when you are, you know... Like, you don't know the industry, you don't know the airlines at all. It is so much easier for them to teach you the skills. Um, so, 
so really just if you want to work for for Delta and that's your goal and that's the only airline you want to work for like in a sense don't really waste time to apply for any any other airlines I just don't I just simply think that that's kind of like waste of your time if you just really want for Delta work for Delta 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 another thing to look at it from HR perspective is that people who switch airlines a lot or switch jobs in general you know if I'm looking at it from HR perspective then it's like well they switch jobs a lot like they're really non like dedicated employees like they doesn't seem to be very loyal um, so if the airline sees that you work for two airlines previously and now you're applying for a third one this might be something that they might question but again I know people who work for two airlines and now they're with a big airline so again it's more about your personality than about anything else but you don't need a regional experience to be hired by legacy or a mainline you don't yeah okay so that's it i hope you liked it and i hope it was beneficial and again if you have questions and if there's something it was very unclear and if you maybe didn't understand something that i was saying let me know and yeah have fun enjoy and if you apply if you're applying to regional airlines on any airlines any other airlines let me know I would be very excited to learn about your journey okay have a good night or afternoon or morning bye